From the day President Trump took office through May of this year, the Washington Post has counted that he has said 3,251 false or misleading claims, leaving Americans to question what is fact and what is a lie. In a recently published article entitled, Can Truth Survive This President, an Honest Investigation, President Trump's ability to alter the truth is brought into question. The author of the piece is nonfiction book critic Carlos Lozada. He joins us now from Washington. Carlos, thanks so much for being with us. Y thanks you for having me. Truth is not dead, but it is degraded, and its cheapening political value predates current management. So where did all of this start? Well, I think it's important to point out that this did not begin with the Trump campaign, with the Trump presidency. Uh, when people look at this, they point, for instance, to the Iraq war, uh, when uh, people were made to believe something that was, in fact, not true about the, the threat posed by, by Saddam Hussein. A lot of the writers who are currently writing about about uh, post-truth and death of truth also point to the 60s when a lot of sort of left-wing thinkers preached postmodernism, saying that uh, there's no such thing as objective truth. Uh, and some of those ideas may have smuggled their way into politics today. So there's certainly a long history here. Right. And to that point that post-truth politics have been around for a while, you even give the example of Jesus in Roman <laughs> times. Uh, was he yes. stretching the truth? <laughs> yes. Um, well, when, uh, when Jesus was before Pontius Pilate, um, he said that he came to bear witness to truth, and Pilate responded, you know, hey, what is truth? You know, so, uh, so even, even then, there was, uh, there was little postmodernism going on there. So, so what can all of this tell us about why this happens and what is happening now? And is there something, if you say it's been around for a while, is there something particularly, particularly dangerous about this iteration of truth stretching? Well, I think, you know, I've, I've been reading a lot of books about, about this subject, and they all have very dramatic titles like The Death of Truth and Post-Truth. Um, you know, I don't think truth is, is being killed off by, by the Trump presidency, but it is being sort of vandalized. It is mm -hmm. being cheapened. Um, and when this happens, it's a lot harder to have the kind of political dialogue that we need to be having about, you know, a whole range of issues. In a democracy, we can and should disagree vociferously about how to respond to the facts of the matter. Right. It's a lot more worrisome when we can't even agree on what those facts of the matter are. Okay, so let's go through a couple examples of the current gap between rhetoric and reality. Uh, Twelve Russians were just indicted for interfering with the 2016 election, and yet, we, you know, we've had articles featuring extensive evidence of meddling, but yet the president has often denied it. You know, what are we to make of that? Well, you know, as kind of haphazard and impulsive as some of the, the deceptions coming out of the Trump White House are, uh, I think it's important to recognize there's a real method here. You know, the president tends to, you know, glom on to uh, sort of a, a, a fringe position, like, like birtherism or like, you know, no, no, uh, um, no Russian interference in the election. Um, but then he both advances and denies it. He'll, he'll say, you know, people are saying, who knows? Um, he will promise evidence, but then not deliver it. Uh, he'll impugn the motives and character of anyone who who uh, who criticizes him for it, and then in the end he'll declare victory, regardless, either way. Right. Um, and so I think it's it's important to kind of recognize this this pattern. Almost all of the de the deceptions that you see coming out of the Trump White House uh, contain, you know, a, a few at least of these elements. So, based on your research for this piece, do you believe you know President Trump is further degrading the truth? I mean, I think it's undeniable that, you know, the president utters many, many uh, statements that are flat out false and continues to do so even when presented with, with contrary evidence. So I think that the, the trend of the, the degrading of truth has certainly been, been deepened and worsened under the Trump presidency, even if it in fact predates him. And, and is there a danger here? Well, I think the danger is uh, not just on some of the specific issues of, say, national security when it comes to, to, to Russian meddling or other issues, but the danger is that we just cannot have the basic necessary dialogues and compromises that any democracy sort of functions on when you can't come to a basic agreement about truth. Um, I think it, with, with President Trump, though, I think it's very important to, to remember that that believing something he says that is not true is rarely about 
conviction or about certainty over the truth of that issue. It's usually about allegiance and loyalty to him. Well, that is an interesting point. I wonder, though, whether you think that we have reached where this is a sort of a slippery slope. I mean, as you say, people have been stretching the truth for millennia. But do you think that there is a point where it becomes really dangerous to the democracy? Well, I mean, I, I think we're there, right? Mm -hmm. I, think, I think we're there. It's hard to see exactly how to undo this process. Some of the, the, the writers I've been, I've been reading point to other periods of what they call, you know, post-truth or, or truth decay uh, and suggest that, you know, the, the power of investigative journalism can have, can have an impact here uh, or that large-scale political scandals end up restoring uh, our, our faith uh, in fact-based information. So what, yeah, um, so what does come next? What do you think needs to happen here to, to restore at least, like you said, some confidence in the facts? Well, I think we need to continue, you know, doing what we're doing, calling out uh, falsehoods when they are, are evident, continue investigating. Um, and one of the, one of the writers that, that I've been consulting, uh, Lee McIntyre, who wrote a book called Post-Truth, suggests that all of us, regardless of our political allegiance, uh, need to think about those, those things that we very much want to be true, even if deep down we, we worry that we may not really have all the facts. Right. Uh, so I think there, there's, there's a responsibility for, for everyone here, even as right now the, the, the focus of this kind of torrent of, of, of falsehood um, is, is the Trump White House. Right. Resist your political allegiances and, and stick to the facts whenever possible. All right. Carlos Lozada, thank you so much for your insight. Thanks for having me.